What's up everyone? How's it going? Hope you're having a very coronavirus free weekend. Now I know the title might seem a little bit clickbaity, but it's true and today I'm going to explain why counting calories is bullshit. So this video is going to be in two parts. The first part is going to be calories going out. So this is your energy that you are expending. The second part is going to be calories going in. And this is going to be the food that you are eating. So the first thing people do is they go online and they find a calculator and they use this to try to calculate how many calories they should eat per day. So you input your height, your age, your weight, your activity levels, blah, 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 blah. And then boom, it spits out a number. Great, right? If you eat this many calories, you'll maintain. If you eat 500 less, you'll lose a pound per week, right? Right? No. Unfortunately, every calculation during this process is just an estimation. So you don't actually know how accurate they are. For example, your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, this is how many calories you are burning. Hello. This hello. is Hello. <laughs> this is how many calories you are burning, right? <laughs> ah. <laughs> Uh, this is how many calories you are burning at rest. So if you do nothing, this is how many calories you will burn. If you are like these little guys and you're running around all damn day, you will burn a lot more. So it's important to realize that this number probably is not accurate. There's a variation, there's a bell curve. So some people have very slow metabolisms, some people have very fast metabolisms. Most people have average metabolisms, but you don't really know where you are. So that's the first reason why it could be wrong. Your BMR could be off by like 500 calories per day. And you just, you know, how is a calculator online going to tell you that? It can't. The second is going to be your activity level. So if you're like those little kids and you're running around all day, that's a lot of activity. Now, how much does that burn? How many calories extra are you burning? The simple fact is you don't know. You can say, oh, at my body weight, I burn 100 calories per mile of running, but it could be 110, it could be 90, it could be 85, you, you just, you're not sure, you don't know. It could even be different for you on different days. Maybe you are tired and you're running less efficiently, you could be burning a few extra calories. A third factor is weight training or high intensity cardio. After you do those, you are burning more calories. Your metabolism is elevated. You know, you're jacked up or you're repairing some of that muscle. It is going to take energy. And so your metabolism is going to be increased. For example, burn victims who are missing 30 or 40% of their skin, their metabolism could be 25, 30, 40% higher than predicted because they have to actually use energy to repair all that tissue. And the same thing happens after downhill running, after weight training, all of these activities increase the metabolism. The fourth one is gonna be NEAT. So this stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. I don't know why scientists do this. I guess they just like to have a good time with acronyms. This is basically energy that you expend without doing formal exercise. So if you're sitting there and you're tapping your foot, that is movement. It takes energy, but it's not really official, formal cardio. A fifth factor is gonna be the environment. If it's very cold, all that shivering will actually burn energy. It's still movement, it's still muscles contracting. It takes energy. If it is very hot, the increased blood flow around your body to try to dissipate that heat will also expend energy. A sixth factor is going to be your hormones, especially your thyroid. This can dramatically impact your metabolism. Some people could even burn double the calories predicted, and some could burn far less. Either way, you don't know based on just some calculator on the internet. Do you think you're sending them a blood test? No, you're just inputting your height, weight, age, activity level. And your activity level even is just a guess. Another factor is going to be what you are eating. If you are eating protein, that is actually going to take more energy to digest. You ever eat a bunch of meat and then you started sweating? 
that's energy being used to break down all of that protein. This is called the thermic effect of food. So roughly 30% of the energy in protein is needed to actually break it down and assimilate it into your body. For carbohydrates, it's roughly 10%, uh, but for fat, it's roughly 3%. But this can even vary based on the type of fat. Something like medium chain triglyceride oils can actually burn even more than the typical 3% that fats burn. This is a big part of the reason why bodybuilders eat a lot of protein, just because it takes a lot of energy to burn. And not only does it take energy to break down into amino acids, if you convert protein to carbohydrate, that also takes energy. So if you're consuming a lot of protein, it's going to be very different than if you're consuming less protein. Even something like your water intake is going to affect your metabolic rate. Every liter of water that you take in is going to burn an extra 60 calories. 60 calories, which is a lot just for drinking water. And then obviously something like coffee or caffeine can also increase your metabolic rate. Or cocaine. So in reality, you don't actually know how many calories are going out. You can get an estimation, but that estimation is usually not going to be particularly accurate. So due to all these factors, let's say you think your maintenance calories is 3,000 calories. It could be 2,800, it could be 3,200, it could be 2,500, it could be 3,500. There's really just no way to tell. And that's such a big variation that it makes your calories in very, very hard to calculate. The reality is that unless you're in a laboratory, what am I, English? Actually, I am half English. My dad is English, <laughs> for, for those of you who didn't know. I guess genetics somehow <laughs> influences language. Uh, but unless you're in a laboratory uh, and they are testing you, you just don't know how many calories you are burning. The variability is enough that it is too much to really be useful. All right, in the second video, I'm going to go over calories in as well as give you some practical recommendations about what to do. Because I always want to make this channel be useful. Alright, that's all for today. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time. Mm, goodbye.